This is a Honda BF 2.3D air-cooled four-stroke outboard engine. It won't start and we're going to go through some fault finding to try and see why. Unlike a normal outboard engine which is water-cooled from a water pump down the bottom of the leg, this is an air-cooled engine which means that it doesn't use a water pump but it has instead as a fan on the flywheel and the cowling is sealed fairly tight all the way around and it's the air's brought in and it's forced over the engine and you've got all these heat sink sort of vents here and all the hot air blows out. The first thing I want to do is we're going to check for spark. Um, so to do that I'm going to take this cowling off. Now as you can see it's got a rubber clip there. We have to undo the fuel cap and we can lift it up and over, pull a bit of the kill the pull cord out. That's the cowling off. And you can see now there's got sort of like a, a cover over the engine. You've got like a fan in here and it blows draws air in, blows it over the engine. The heat of the engine's dissipated out the bottom. Test for spark. We've got a spark plug boot cover here. Just take that off. Here's the spark plug. What I've got in my box here is the spark plug tester. It's an inline one. Now if there's enough HT lead here, which there is, stick that end in there. Push that over there. And when, when we pull the recoil starter here, we should get a flash which indicates a spark. If we don't get a spark, if we don't get a flash, it means there's potential that the coil, the spark plug, the kill switch is def defective and we'll have to investigate further. I'm hoping we have got a flash and the problem lies in the carburetor which is here. Probably a bit of fuel in it, uh, a bit of water in the fuel. Um, we'll take it from there. But first things first, we'll check for a spark. Now being an air-cooled engine, we don't have to worry about having this in the water to run it. And neither do we have a clutch for forward, neutral, reverse. In this engine, there's pretty much just two big, um, I don't know how you describe it, sort of shoes, like clutch shoes. And as the engine speed increases, it overcomes the spring tension. The, art, the, the weights push out, make contact with like sort of a, a collar in the drive shaft and it engages with the prop. It's only got one direction, which is forward. Um, as you bring the power off, the spring tension overcomes the centrifugal force, pulls the shoes in, and you've got neutral. To go in reverse, it's as simple as turning the engine 180 degrees towards yourself and applying a bit of throttle. And to go forward, standard. Now the problem is with this, the recoil handle is part of the cowl in here, so it's a little bit awkward to get it aligned. We also don't have the kill cord for the engine, it didn't get dropped off by the customer, but I can pull that out, brace the engine and just give it a pull. And we're looking for a, a bright flash here. You might not be able to see it on the GoPro, but I'll be able to see it. Doesn't, doesn't take much. Yeah, you can see a spark there. Do it one more time. Yeah, so we're getting flashes. So that indicates to me that the kill switch is working. If we had the kill cord, I've just pulled the button out. The HT lead's working, the coil's working, the spark plug's working. So what we've done there is we've basically eliminated the ignition side and my bet is on the carburetor. The customer did state that he did see a little bit of water in the fuel when he took the lid off. And because the densities are different, I imagine the water has found its way to the bottom of the bowl and that's why the engine won't start. So the next sta stage will be to remove this air box and um, give us good access to the carburetor. We'll remove the carburetor and see what's happening inside. Another thing I want to do is I want to remove the spark plug. I have got a new one on order and we'll just see the condition of the spark plug. I have serviced this engine before and I have got the, the old service document and I'll compare the figures see if the gap's changed. I doubt it has, because we have got a, a spark. I was just curious to see what the condition here. Yeah, it's like the engine's never been run. 
absolutely brand new that NGK CR4 HSB gap to I believe 0 0.6 so we'll reinsert that okay so the next step will be to get to the carburetor so we've got two what are these eight mil bolts on top here of the airbox we'll remove these I was doing like a normal outboard because this is an air-cooled engine, everything's encased to direct the airflow from an inlet to an outlet. So those two bolts there and the rest of it's just held on looks with a little rubber boot. And here we are, small little carburetor on the side here. And it looks like we also have the rest of the airbox with the two mountain bolts here and here, which hold the carburetor to the intake. We just take these two off, we'll just slacken them off, see what we're working with. I, say I have got a new gasket set on order as well, so I'm not too worried if we damage a gasket taking these off. There's the first bolt, second bolt. Seems that they are different sizes. The longer one is on the right, shorter one on the left. And there we go. Just lift that out of the way. So here we are. Here's the carburetor. Fuel on, off. See inside of there as well. Bit of like oily fuel residue on the on that gasket there. Nothing to worry about. It should be free just to lift off now, but we're not going to do it just yet because I'm still waiting on those parts, but that gives you an idea of, at the moment, how to get to the carburetor. Once the parts arrive, we'll strip it down, take this bowl off, give it a clean and see if it runs. We'll just go over, while well, we are here, what these linkages are. This one here at the bottom, this is your fuel on, fuel off. This lever here, this rod connect to this butterfly plate that's the choke and this one here is the throttle um, this is just a vent underneath I don't know if you can see you've got a little screw that's a drain tap customer says it's corroded damaged and I agree with him on that I've drained the fuel out as we suspect the carb is at fault due to the air uh, having spark now I don't know if you can see that, but right in the bottom there is a sample of the fuel. It's full of water and dirt. Now I suspect we've got the same in the bottom of the float bowl. I mean, even just looking at the fuel colour itself, I mean, the smell of it, I think it's the fuel's gone off, it's stale, it's got water in it. Um, so I think that's the, the leading cause of our no-start problem. So what we'll do now is, the, I've removed the carb, We'll go and clean it and see what the inside condition is like. So now we've got the carburetor off the engine and we've seen that there's water in the fuel and the fuel's stale off, contaminated with dirt. Uh, and the next course of action is to strip the carburetor down, see what's happening inside of it, clean it and fit a new gasket set. I've got a new gasket set here. It's just the float bowl, um, the fuel on off, and the upper plate, and a few other little O-rings and seals. We'll remove the float bowl, and that's on a 10mm socket. So we'll just take, the, take the, uh, this out. Remove the lower bowl, just held on with this 10mm bolt. And this is in effect like the fuel reservoir for the carburetor. And we'll just remove that. And there you go, as you can see, got like fuel gelling. And I imagine the jet is completely blocked. I mean, the float is just coated in like a... The only way I can describe it is like a jelly. Um, obviously the fuel's gone off, it's had water in it, dirt, God knows what else. And as the fuel's broken down, it's, I suppose in, in effect, it's 
sort of change into I don't know it's, it's constituent parts so it's I don't know what the gel is but whether that's anything to do with it being E10 going from E5 I don't know but the fuel has gone off it's not going to run so we'll strip it down further and we'll give it a good clean um, as you, on my finger there you can see the bowl's just covered so no matter how much you pulled this engine it would never start so now we'll just take the top cover off as well just four screws held on just use a screwdriver take each screw out in turn this is the top cover now just remove that not as dirty as the bottom I suspect all the heavy sediment sat in the bottom so the top's sort of unscathed but it still needs a clean we'll go ahead and clean all that the next part to remove is now the float it's held on with this little pin push the pin out all the way and the float will now lift up and off and attached to it is the float needle Get a good look inside there. Quite a bit of dirt. Next bit I want to remove is the fuel tap, which is just on the side here. Held on with two screws again. And that little plate should just lift, lift off there. And then the handle should just lift out looking quite clean and there's a gasket in there as well with four holes in it I've got a new one of them so with a small flat blade screwdriver we'll just pick out that old gasket there because we'll be replacing this one and that's it removed it sits on those two little dowels put that to one side okay so I've had a good look at it and I've given it a good clean off camera. It's got these gaskets left to remove. Um, it's not as bad uh, surface contamination. It comes straight off. The only problem is I can't get the jet out of the emulsion tube as well. Uh, I've rotted it through, but the insides, it's quite corroded. And when I get the screwdriver in it, it's just, it's just, because it's just a flat, um, like an insert for a flat blade it's just taken the the top of the the jet off so i don't want to do it any further because I'll, I'll end up just wrecking it so i've given it the best clean i can now we'll take these gaskets off there's a top one and there's one on the bowl as well um i've blown it all through with compressed air clean it with carb cleaner it's a small carb there's not much to it um we'll just take it from there we'll reinstall it back on the engine uh fresh fuel the new gasket set and see what happens i'm i'm hopeful so after a clean i've reassembled it new gaskets on uh fuel isolator everything like that so now what we'll do is we'll put it on the engine fresh fuel give it a spin see what happens so what we're going to do now is we're going to reattach the carb to the engine so we'll take the filler cap off lid off. Now we've got the fuel line here, choke and the throttle. So we'll reattach the fuel line. And we've got the throttle. And then the choke. I think I'll have to do the choke first. Probably with the fuel line off. Make life a lot easier. Push the fuel line on. Get the throttle on. A little clip on that.
see the mountain holes there, everything's lining up just nicely. So I've got the airbox in, we gonna make sure the crankcase breather goes in there as well. On the right hand side, and then the mountain holes line up with the carb into the, th into the tape, intake manifold. I took the top box off, I forgot we took that off to start with, and then we'll put that on after we've assembled it. Then it's just a case of putting the two bolts in. So we've got the two bolts in, the longer one on the right, short one on the left. We'll just wind them in, it's eight mil. We'll just wind them in, just to seat everything nicely. Just making sure that it's on the threads. Start that one off, start the second one off. Just make sure everything's aligned. Before we nip everything up, we'll just give a function test once we've secured everything. Just so we don't get too far ahead of ourselves. Just securing the throttle there. So just chest the choke. You can see the choke there. It's moving and the throttle. That's moving as well. Fuel. And that's moving there nicely as well. And the last piece is just the top box. You've got this little grommet that fits onto there. Slide that across. There you go. Sit nicely there. Two screws. That's it. All back together. What we'll do now, we'll put some fuel in, just check for leaks. This is fresh fuel. Just pop it in. The tank's not particularly big anyway, so I'm not too worried if we lose a bit of fuel. And drain it's really easy. So that's about half full there. Fuel's in the off position. We'll put it to the on position. We'll let the bowl fill up and give it five minutes and just see if there's any leaks, any drips. It'll be very evident if there is. And then we'll go for a spin, see if it'll start. So I refitted the lid, secured it at the front, fuel caps back on, the vent's open. We'll fit a makeshift pulse uh, kill cord on there. So put some more grips on there, put a cloth just to protect it, pulled it out, just see the gap. Hopefully it's enough. And we'll give it a spin, so we'll put a bit of choke on, set the throttle to there. Brace the engine and we'll give it a pull. There we go, just running there. So it is running. We'll pull it through a bit more. Uh, you, you might have seen the prop spin in there. That's just because the RPM's so high that the uh, the clutch is engaging. But we'll give it a few more spins and see if we can get it to settle. There we go, got the engine idling in a way. I don't think it's going to truly idle just because of the condition of the car. Uh, there's a bit of corrosion in there on the needle and the jet, but as you can see, it does run. Uh, so a quick update on the engine, I was able to get it to idle. Um, I went back in and cleaned the car again. It just sort of the uh, It's set too high, so it's running, running fast. Uh, I've adjusted it now. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, not the most in depth, but you know, did a bit of fault finding there. Found it was the carb, dirty fuel, cleaned it out. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed that.